What's going on, Jerome's? So the NFL draft is in the books, and, and of course, everyone and the mom has their opinions. The winners and the losers. Uh, and of course, Mel Kaipa Jr., Todd, 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 uh, Grand Poobah of the NFL draft. I love and respect his work. And so, so Mel's interesting because after night one, the Minnesota Fighting Vikings uh, they tr uh, had a small trade up for J.J. McCarthy, quarterback of the future. They had a small trade up for Dallas Turner, talisman on the edge, uh, getting after things uh, on uh, on the edge. And you were thinking that, okay, you're going to be good to go. And we we even pointed out that Mel Kuyper thought that the Vikings were uh, amongst his biggest winners from round one. And the whole thing about um, blah, blah, blah. So this was the morning after the first round. Minnesota was able to use that pick at 23 to move up six spots to Land Turner, my top ring edge rusher, and the number nine player on my big board. While the franchise had to give up quite a bit, uh, it also surrendered blah, 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 blah. Uh, Turner is a great player who fills a position of need like the Bears. The Vikings landed two players in my top 15. This is a really solid haul. So, again, after night one, biggest winners, really solid haul. And, and the Vikings, I mean, the rest of the way, I mean, they didn't have a, a day two pick, which is fine. And day three, I mean, people may dis uh, disagree with the picks, but Quasing Company, they address needs as well as went BPA. And I, frankly, I, I do love and adore the Vikings day three class. And notably, they didn't make any trades, so they didn't have to maneuver around. They didn't give up any future first round picks, or they, they didn't do any uh, give up any uh, future picks at all. And at the end of the day, the Vikings, yes, they traded with the Texans, yes, they traded with the Jets, and yes, they traded with the Jaguars. And beep up up a poop. I mean, they gave up some mid round picks in 2024, which is fine. Uh, but at the end of the day, they gave up future two, three, four, which you're gonna be fine. All right, so yes, the Vikings are entering the 2025 draft with a first and two fifths, but they're also uh, projected to have an additional third because of Kurt Cousins, so they're going to be fine. Also, youngest team in the league, they have a bajillion dollars in cap space after those picks, and they're going to be fine, right? But here's the thing. So when, when Mel said after night one that he really likes the, the Vikings draft, really solid haul, biggest winners from round one, all of the trades were already done. So all of this was already done and baked into the cake and hay is in the barn. It isn't like the Vikings made a bunch of Lulu trades day two or day three. They didn't do that. So that's important. Then you get to the end of the draft. So Mel Kaipa Jr. Uh, going full on turncoat and mf -er. mm. uh, So gave the Vikings a C plus for the draft. And his main issue with the draft was... This, my qualm about GM Kwesi Dofamensis' class is more to do with mortgaging the future on this Minnesota rooster. So, so again, all of these trades, all of the trades were already done when he gave his initial diagnosis of round one that, hey, biggest winners of round one. This is a really solid haul. But then for some reason, Mel just decided to be like, ah, C+, plus, which was one of the lowest grades they gave up. And now he's talking about mortgaging the future, even though he already knew that the Vikings did that. It's ridiculous. Also, since when was mortgaging the future giving up a one year of two, three, four? Not the first, not multiple first, not multiple years of mid-round picks. One year of two, three, four. It, it, it would have seen as a potentially down draft. Hmm? Mm -hmm. well, what's that a big deal? Maybe the late great Bill Tobin is right. Who the hell is Mel Kuyper anyway? That's fair. Now, Mel, again, I respect the work, and I feel like this is probably more of a case of Mel going too hard in the paint, supporting the Vikings after night one, and then some big wig, some executive, some, uh, uh, hey, Mel, Mel, Me Melody, I, I know that you're new around these parts, but we don't take kindly to the Vikings kind around these kind of parts. So why don't you tone things down a, a little bit in your post-draft assessment? And then all of a sudden, the Vikings are downgraded. Again, it's amazing where everything was baked into the cake. All of the trades, McCarthy and Turner, everything was up here. Biggest winners. This is a really solid haul. And then at the end of the draft where, I mean, the Vikings didn't have a pick in day two. And day three, I think, was solid. All of a sudden, whoop, shriveled. C+. Plus. It's ridiculous, man. It's, it's ridiculous. But... Again, Mel is one of the good ones, but uh, I feel like this is the absolute state of the media. You're talking out of both sides of their mouth, and we, we point out this malfeasance when it comes to the Vikings because 
you know, ca- casual fans, Joe six pack. And like, this is where they get their information. So all of a sudden, I mean, maybe they weren't paying attention at the end of round one when the Vikings ha- had those two fantastic first round picks. Uh, and then they're just like, Oh, the Vikings draft is actually bad because the mortgage, the future, blah, 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 blah. please, 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 please. But I mean, come on, Mel, come on, Mel, Todd, 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 Mel, come on. Anyways, your thoughts, our thoughts. Mel Kuyper Jr. goes complete turncoat on the Vikings. Goes heel. Mm. Uh, let us know your thoughts and our thoughts. Blah, blah, blah. You guys are too. Skull production value. <laughs>